We're back at the U.S. Africa Business Forum in the Mandarin Hotel in Washington, D.C. The Bloomberg Google Hangout joined uh, via remote for this Google Hangout by uh, Isis uh, Madison, who's joining us from Kenya, and also by on set here by Strive uh, Masiwa, the CEO of Econet. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about technology uh, in Africa, in particular, uh, Mr. Masiwa. I wanted to talk to you. Uh, you have a, uh, a telecommunications and uh, broadband uh, firm, and you do a lot of mobile banking. And I'm curious about the uh, the number of people who have bank accounts uh, in some of the countries you operate in, particularly. I know you operate in the southern part of the continent, South Africa, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. um, what is the what is the proportion of people who have banking now? What did it look like when you first started your business? Uh, and, and where are things headed? Because my impression is there are a lot of folks who don't have uh, basic banking services, or at least historically have not. Uh, uh, sure. Um, you know, as you know, we are a telecoms group with operations and investments in about 17 African countries. We also have some interests in, in Latin America and, and London. But um, so, and we don't we don't have uh, mobile financial services in all the markets because we do different kinds of businesses. The almost every mobile network operator in Africa now has some kind of uh, mobile banking platform. It is the next big idea that is being rolled out across Africa. And success differs from operator to operator. We haven't had the same level of success in every market. Our, our Zimbabwean operation has been particularly successful. Uh, we, and there we have, we're not only doing mobile money transfer, but we're also doing banking. Uh, to give you an example, Zimbabwe has 17 commercial banks. And between them, the first commercial bank entered the country about 100 years ago, which is one of the big British banks. So very well established commercial banking sector. But between them, when we set up our system, they had almost 900,000 bank accounts. We, our, our platform now has 1.5 million bank accounts. Now these are people who operate their bank accounts on their phone. They're able to save money. They're able to do transactions, and they're able to borrow money from us. Hmm. Uh, so you become the lender. Yeah, we're just a normal bank in the in that sense, but uh, we it's done on the mobile phone. And you do funeral and life insurance services. We as do well? all, we do all those. Yes, uh, in, in in different markets. You said some of the markets are more successful than the others. You said Zimbabwe was particularly successful. What's the uh, What's the difference? What, what, what factors go into whether uh, you have success in being able to build out in a country and, uh, and get your services to people? Listen, you know, if I could, if I could answer that question, uh, you know, we would, we would take over the whole continent. I can't say to you, even, even Mpesa's model has, in Kenya has not been duplicated by the Vodafone group across the world in the same way. So uh, there are some learnings that uh, we, can, we, we, have re we have concluded are part of what needs to be there. Uh, we've noticed that it's important that you have a strong agency infrastructure. Uh, you, we noticed that it's important that the, the tariff system is, is uh, transparent, that there's great simplicity, and there must be trust of the brand to which the people are coming for their product. And uh, Isis, uh, if you could talk to me a little bit about the role, you've got some experience with uh, Google and MTV and some, some other companies that are pretty well known here in the States. Can you talk to me a little bit about the role of, uh, of technology in uh, integrating the African content, uh, continent, uh, 54, 55 countries, a uh, huge, huge swath of land, um, and I'm curious to the degree to which uh, modern communication is helping integrate uh, the African continent. Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, as you said, I have a background working for um, some of the largest you know, brands in the world, just MTV and, and Google here in Africa over a number of years. And what I've started to see 
primarily over the last, let's say, five to seven years, is that both with the um, growth of the, the mobile, mobile phones in addition to the internet, um, there's just been an explosion of, you know, just really people coming online and really kind of starting to get to a critical mass, you know, well over, um, you know, hundreds of millions of people are actually online now. Um, and so what that's enabled is just so many, a lot more interconnectivity across the continent that you didn't even, that wasn't even capable uh, five years ago. So this is really a story, um, we talk about interconnection and, and interactivity um, amongst different parts of the continent, because you're correct, it is a huge, in terms of land size, land mass, and lots of different countries, lots of different cultures, um, that particularly the internet, mostly on mobile phones, is most of the way people are getting online, that people are really able to um, interact and connect both from everything from social networking, like everyone does the rest of the world, to um, online businesses and um, overall communication. And do you see, I, I, I know in North Africa in particular, as part of the Arab Spring, we saw a lot of the use of uh, mobile technology, a lot of the use of uh, instant communication as a disruptive force in revolutions uh, as part of the Arab Spring. Also, obviously, the ability to get people uh, connected uh, in ways that are, you know, in terms of commerce and other things. Do you generally see it as more of a, of a, a force that brings people together, as one that's more disruptive? I would ask both of you, uh, the sort of <laughs> instant communication. I just want to go first. Sure. Sure. I mean, I, I'm definitely a, a bias towards it bringing people together, and I think what I see and what I've experienced over my career has been just a growth in participation, right? So technology enables a lot more people to participate in conversations and to engage um, leaders, engage government, whether at the county level or at the, um, you know, at a, at a high level. So you see real engagement happening in countries like Kenya, which um, cities like Nairobi, people are very engaged in Twitter, and a lot of the leaders are held more accountable um, because there is more access and ways to engage. So I, I'm definitely of the bringing people together, having more conversation and more dialogue is what this technology enables and is only increasing. And so I actually want to ask you a more specific question about that, which is uh, you told me earlier that uh, you work with the uh, Holocaust Museum here in Washington, D.C., and I wonder what impact you think uh, mobile technology, mobile communication uh, would have in the prevention of genocide. I know that's an issue that you care about and work on, and I wonder if uh, the ability to instantly send images, the ability to instantly communicate is a force that uh, could work against uh, genocides, either repeat of the Holocaust or what happened uh, in Rwanda uh, a couple of decades ago in Africa. What's, what's your thought on that? You know, uh, Jonathan, technology is a tool. It's an instrument. You can use an ax for good, you can use an axe for destructive purposes. When radio was, was invented in the 1930s, people thought radio would bring enlightenment, education. Hitler took it and used it for propaganda. Uh, we face the same forces of evil today. They are, uh, internet is the greatest invention in the modern time. It's an invention which can be used for extraordinary good. But there are also groups out there, as you know, who, are, who go online to, to do heinous things, to attack children, pornography, and other things. Uh, the ter the today's jihadists are using the internet in, 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 in the most heinous ways. So what is important when we take is to, for the good people to try and use technology for as much to win against evil. But it's, in the end, it's about people. The uh, technology doesn't have morality, but we do. We do. <laughs> uh, do you, uh, so coming to the uh, U.S. Africa Business Forum, uh, what do you think is the takeaway uh, from this day of, uh, of speeches and discussions and bilateral conversations and investment? What's the big takeaway from, from this? Is this a step in a long road? Is this a, a watershed moment for the U.S. relationship with Africa? Look, it, it is a watershed moment. You, you've, you've, you've coined the right phrase, so let us use that. It is a watershed moment. I participated uh, in President Obama's visit to Africa when we had the CEO's forum, where he met with a group of about 12 CEOs. And we talked for maybe 90 minutes. And, in, and he talked about 
the need for a summit of this nature and that we would be invited together with the political leaders to discuss. I think the watershed moment is a, is, is a new chapter in a, in a long relationship. Africa and the United States have a long relationship. Uh, we know each other well, our children come to school here, many of, many of us are educated here. So we, we, but this has been an area of our relationship that has been neglected, our trade and investment with one another. But you have always been great neighbors to us in times of when we needed a hand up. We always knew that America would be there. Uh, but now, you know, we need a handshake for business, shall I, to extend that metaphor. So it's, if you, you only need to look at the, qual of the, I wouldn't say the quality, but the caliber of the business leaders that are here, particularly when you look at your household names in the United States. Look who's here. I'd, I'd say this is a herd of elephants. <laughs> So it shows you that it's not just political. B business is ahead of what politics in America may be seeing in Africa. Uh, your IBMs and your, and your GEs already know that Africa is open for business. There's no one in here asking questions about, are you open for business? I, I did a panel discussion yesterday with the GE guys and they've doubled their order book in, in some 18 months. So it's, it's good business for A lot of consumers. Us. Absolutely. Well, uh, Strive Masua, thank you so much for joining us. Isis Madison, really appreciate you uh, coming in yes, uh, remotely. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is the Bloomberg Google Hangout. We'll be right back momentarily uh, from the U.S. Africa Business Forum here at the Mandarin Hotel in Washington, D.C.